This day, conference will now be recorded. Good day. This is Harold Watson, committee chairman of the Housatonic Greenway Complete Streets Subcommittee. We are conducting this regular meeting, monthly meeting on gotomeetings.com on Wednesday, October 4th, 2023 at noon. The quorum for this is meeting is six, and I will now call the following members to speak as present. Uh, Karen Burke. Present. Tom um, Dillon, no. Christopher Green, yes. Present. Ellen Frank, no. Nels Pearson, no. George Purim, yes. Yeah. Jennifer Sheldon, no. James Simon, I thought I saw him on his, yeah, he's yeah, there. He's silent. Yes. And Harold Watson, and our planning board member, Sarah Graham. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six people. Um, we have an alternate board member, Brian Sturbis, but he's not here. And Karen, I know, is not here today. So we can proceed. Uh, we are waiting still on uh, Susmitha and possibly John Casey, but we're going to proceed ahead. Uh, Harold, John is, Her, excuse me, Harold, John is not attending. He's not. Okay. Thank you. Please identify yourself by name each time you would like to speak. The public is free to listen, but may speak only at the invitation of the chair. Please send a message over chat. With that said, I call to order this regular monthly meeting of Stratford, Houston, and Greenway, the Complete Street Subcommittee on Planning. Uh, the first item on our agenda is... Our call to order, approval of minutes of uh, August 2nd, 2023. Will someone give me an approval? I make a motion. George, okay. Burke. I second that. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, now we're getting into territory that we need to have Susmitha. If we don't have Susmitha, then I'm going to go move ahead with Metrocog and uh, BSC. Um, and we'll let her. Before we do that, though, I just want to, I sent everybody an email. Um, Aileen, would you resend this out? I sent it to you also. I sent you uh, the logo page. We're very fortunate. We have a graphic artist who has updated all of our logos. So at some point when we're ready to make signage, we actually do have artwork for it now. Um, it It is uh, the Housatonic Greenway, the Housatonic Greenway with complete streets, the Housatonic Greenway with East Coast, uh, with the East Coast Greenway, and uh, the actual logo for the East Coast Greenway. So at some point, we will be able to hopefully use those. And at some point, I can forward those to Public Works. Hopefully, they'll be able to make us some signs. Uh, I'm trying to do this. We, we're, we do not have a line item for this yet. The only other thing that I'd like to bring up is that I have a policy statement from the Connecticut Department of Transportation dated August 21st, 2023. I sent everybody a copy of that just like a half hour ago. And I'm not going to read through it, but it basically reconfirms the state's um, and, and the state DOP's take on um, pedestrian facilities and bicycle facilities and transit pr provisions. Uh, it's not radically, Chris, this will, should have some import to you. And Jim, this should have some import to you uh, in terms of what their position is. It's not far from what I discussed with you, Chris. Um, they're essentially making a case. The only thing that I need to get clarification on is they make it very clear that um, local roads are not not included on this. And I don't know uh, if that just means it's totally up to town town control or not. Harold, Harold I have a question. It's Karen. Yes. Um, is this something new or has, has they have they changed something and then they sent it out? Like what was the impetus for us to have this? I, I think this is trying to realign the the, the DOT 
post COVID with what the in initial intention of complete streets was. Okay, so nothing should really changed here. No, but it's a reconfirmation that yes, we have a right to insist that complete streets be used wherever there are any kind of substantial road repairs. I see, thank you. And that it be included in all of the projects. Um, so I ask everybody to please go to the Connecticut DOT um, and you can find updated projects that concern Stratford, mainly the, um, the uh, phase one and phase two, but uh, of complete streets, which we're gonna hear from Devin and uh, Rob about, but also the um, traffic circle that's going in on Stratford Avenue. Um, that is also up there as a funded project through the DOT. So I'm sure, I know that uh, Metroclog had some, has some play in, in that project, but it looks like that project is gonna go through also some point. Oh, Sarah has a puppy. Okay, so the next item is our Greenway Complete Street status. And what I'm gonna do here is uh, turn the floor over to Rob and to Devin and let them give their presentation where we're going on the portion of the green of uh, complete streets that runs from uh, Barnum Avenue to uh, Paradise Green. Am I correct, Rob? Yep, that is correct. Okay, so I'm going to turn the floor over to the two of you for now. Okay. Oh, Smith um, is here. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I, I joined late, so I just I just joined the meeting a second ago. Sorry. We'll forgive you. Thank you. Yep, me too. I was late too. Sorry. Who, who is me too? I'm sorry, Joe. I, I'm I just, Oh, Jennifer. Yay. Okay. <coughs> All right. So Smith, uh, I was introducing um, Rob and Devin. Uh, in your stead, but you're here now. So I'm going to let you introduce them and give us an update. Uh, for some reason, my link was taking me to Teams meeting every time and the, there was no Teams meeting. I, I, I just don't know what was happening. That's why I'm late. I apologize, but um, thank you, Rob and team for joining us today. I invited them to the meeting today because they have some draft designs for 30% submission um, to DOT regarding Complete Streets Phase 2 from the north of Barnum Avenue to Paradise Green. And uh, we thought this is uh, a good time for us to review the design drawings today, which, you know, are pretty um, much like, you know, in their first stage of review. So if you have any thoughts or comments, that will be helpful to uh, revise these drawings uh, later on and um, invite more public comment on these drawings. Um, so Rob, do you want to take the floor and introduce the drawings? Sure. Um, and if I can share my screen, if I don't know who's running this meeting, but I, the presenter, if I can uh, share my screen, that would be fantastic. Um, You're now the presenter, Rob. Yeah, all right. Thank you very much. I think this will work. All right, everyone can see that. Can you zoom a little bit? Yeah, I'll, I'll zoom around a little bit. Um, but I just wanted to give a little uh, a brief update on where we are. So as you probably know, phase one of Main Street improvements has already begun in construction. You've probably seen activity along Main Street as the, as the contractor has been working through those uh, uh, those uh, that project. Uh, so now we are on phase two, going uh, as you said from Barnum Avenue to um, or actually go to Wilcoxon to Paradise Green area. Um, so I would just want to take short short amount of time here um, just to walk through these plans. These are 30% design plans. 
Uh, they will be submitted to DOT for the review. We're doing our own internal review of these plans. Uh, MetroCog and the town are also taking a look at these. So these are uh, 30%. And um, once we go through all our reviews, we will continue on to a 60% level, a 90% level, and then into bid documents. So I just want to take a, a few moments to kind of walk you through the progress that we have made so far. Um, let's even start with these plans. Um, so this is Barnum Avenue on the left-hand side. Uh, moving north is to the right, heading up Main Street. Uh, throughout the project, uh, we are calling out for new curving uh, to try to, uh, a lot of the curve is is either low or, or pretty damaged, so we're are proposing new curbing, uh, new driveways. Uh, we're working with uh, GBT on on their bus stops. So you can see here a, a new bus stop uh, and an access path back to the sidewalk, um, leading alongside the roadway, as well as across the street here. So these are some general construction plans. Uh, throughout this corridor, we are going with the same crosswalk look that we had uh, designed in phase one, which is a stamp bituminous crosswalk that will look uh, have a have a brick appearance to it. Uh, so we are increasing some crosswalks. We're moving some crosswalks. This one at uh, Longbrook Avenue really doesn't have a landing on the other side, so we slid it down the street a little bit. So there is landing and connections to the sidewalk. This one does not currently have an accessible connection to the sidewalk. There's a set of stairs at that location. So we are trying to um, address those items as we go along here as well. Moving up the street a little bit more, again, it's new curving, crosswalks, and I'll get to the interesting stuff in a minute. So again, curving, crosswalks, moving further up. Into Can you the, give uh, the street? Do you can you? I can't. We see are this. at we're at Beer's Place at this location. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And uh, was at North Avenue across the street from it. Um, so we are moving up, and as we get into this, is where it gets a little bit more um, more modifications to the street is when we get into the intersection with Huntington. And at this location, we are actually proposing a a bump out in the curbing. And as you as we move into the the uh, lane arrangements, you'll see uh, why this is beneficial. It does help reduce uh, help manage some traffic, helps get a, a bike lane going through here, and also get, adds a little bit more green space to this intersection. As you know, this intersection is a very wide, um, has multiple signals to it, uh, kind of a complex intersection and by doing this we can help reduce some of the complexity reduce some of the pavement widths and help we feel it's going to help manage the traffic a little bit better as we move into i have a quick question it's karen sure a what's a bump out is that a flat surface that's oh no this is this would be we're moving the curb line out into the street some more uh, okay so it'll be a flat so, surface and will cars be able to park there no, this will be this will be a lawn. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, so the actual curb line will be moved out. This will be lawn, and we are extending these driveways out to meet the road. Uh, um, uh, Rob, yes, on the uh, at the base of Paradise Green, the crossover. I believe that is that Park Park Street. This is yes. Huntington and Main Street. Park Street's a little bit further north, Harold. It's just okay. a little bit north. So you're actually moving. You're moving that closer to the center of town. Yeah. So we're we're heading up into into the Paradise Green. This is the very tip of okay of the green. So one, my question one there. The, go ahead. Um, we skipped over as we went up the street, Garden Avenue. Um, there was two days ago a fatal a, a pedestrian accident at that intersection. Um, yes, there was. Yep. I was just curious 
if I, mean, I know it's early to understand the dynamics of what happened there, but are there any substantial improvements to that intersection? Um, trying to find Garden Avenue on here. It's right. It's the street before Freeman Avenue. Right at the tip of the green. Right at the tip of the green. Okay. Tip of the green is Freeman, and it's Garden is the next one down south. Birch, Freeman. All right. Garden is the one there at the bottom where you just had it. It's like oh, two yes. separate streets yes, with a right. median. Yep, that's right. There it is. All the way on the yes. left hand side of your. Yep. Uh, so at this point, we are not proposing anything significant. Um, changes in that at that intersection uh, I, I was made aware of uh the fatality that happened there i do not know the dynamics of what happened was she crossing main or was she crossing garden i the do not street. know does anybody know <laughs> on here not not yet but i harold this was the second fatality in that area yes. within the I last few years well, so this is definitely an intersection one. One yeah. of the things this plan does is it puts crosswalk, the pebbled crosswalks here on both sides of garden. So that actually will help a little bit. Um, it will help a little bit. And, and as we get into the striping plan, I'll show you some other improvements that uh, may help. Uh, the goal of this project is to um, limit the multiple lanes that we have along here. And I can show you that and actually hey, can i ask one question before we leave the crosswalk subject sure so i don't know if it's possible but my wife works up in new haven and you know it's a pedestrian crazy town up there but they have these crosswalks and either it's by button or by sensor um there's a post and there's literally a flashing white light to grab someone's eye to indicate that someone's in the pedestrian Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a very safe feature. And I was almost run down yesterday at Paradise Green and I, you know, by a maniac, you know, I don't think a sign would have helped. In fact, I was standing next to the state law sign. But these flashing lights, when you're driving up and down these roads, it's frequent that like you just don't see the person. So I feel like that is a very important thing because Main Street's so high speed and um i just wanted to put that idea out there there's a thing yeah. in new haven where they flash lights as soon as you hit the button to cross the street yeah. yeah it's called a rapid flashing beacon um and their lights can either be actually in the crosswalk sign or just below the crosswalk <clears throat> sign so you have uh, options to use that uh in in this design can you add those immediately can you, is those can we just choose to add those ourselves um I mean, certainly the, the town could add them uh, outside of this project if there is a, a need to them. I, why why does it have to be outside of the project when we're doing the work now? I mean, we, we do have the them in the project, exactly. But if you want to have it done immediately. Yeah, no, I'm it, saying in the project, like as yes. part of the project and the improvement, flashing lights for pedestrians is already included? Um, yes, I think we have them in a couple locations. Some of the locations okay. are in signals. Sure. At, at, at signalized intersections where we would not sure, need sure. them. So there is a okay. pedestrian phase as part of that signal. But where right. there is a mid block crossing, then we do have, uh, we do recommend those rapid flashing beacons. And they're I don't in there now. Aware of it, if you're aware of it, Rob, but that section at Garden, where Garden Street is, is um, how many people cross over from the neighborhood to the south of there, the Longbrook neighborhood because there's a whole row of doctors and lawyers offices there. So mm -hmm. currently there is no crosswalk in the middle of that section anywhere. Uh, there's only, the way you have it here is you have a crosswalk at North and you have a crosswalk at Freeman, I believe. Uh, yeah, we, we really don't wanna, we're trying to avoid and trying to eliminate our mid-block crossing. Yes, no, I, I understand. I understand, but that's currently where right. the traveling memory of the public is. They mm -hmm. end up walking across with no no intersection in that area. So maybe just adding signage saying half block south, half block north, used crosswalk. 
I just um, I'd, I'd pipe up a little bit to say that we're supposed to be designing this stuff around the people and how they behave and what they want and where they go. And I just feel like if there's a known place where people have been crossing the street, we need to design around that to some degree. You know, it's just we're not designing to a well. It's just people are important and what they, you know, what they're, what they, we should be protecting them in the way that they're using their town. Mm -hmm. to, Thank to you. Finish, to finish my thoughts on garden, I hope that it, when and where the logistical details of both fatalities are available, that they are looked at to understand if there's anything that can be done with this plan to prevent anything like it in the future, whether that's improved yeah. lighting. I know that the most recent fatality was around 7.15 at night, so around when it's getting dark. But um, please, if, if possible, if there's any way to incorporate the data from what happened in those two incidents. Yeah. That's a we great suggestion, Chris, because the state DOT people, you know, it, they're just, you know, they're far away. So they, they we should have little icons on this map that says there was a fatality here, and they would better understand that these are important intersections. Can I, can I chime in really quickly? Um, so my, just for the record, I know this meeting is being recorded. Um, I'm Devin with Metrocog. Um, and, you know, I hear, you know, some of the concerns and things that, you know, have been, that have been brought up so far. Um, and, you know, like others, I'm not sure of the details of that pedestrian fatality that happened earlier this, this week. Um, but you know it's known for pedestrians to take the path of least resistance when you know getting from one location to the next which is understandable you know I, i'll be completely honest and you know i don't always cross in areas where you know there are crosswalks if it's more convenient for me to cross here um but one of the things that you know i, I will say you know the, the dot they own this roadway not to say that their word is the final word, we can have some pushback on that. But one thing that they've been trying to do is limit mid-block crossings like uh, yeah. Rob had mentioned. Um, so if we can you know, provide some crossing amenities like a rapid flashing beacon um, or you know, a exclusive pedestrian phase for crossing a, a particular um, intersection, I mean, we, we'll try and accommodate that as, as, as much as possible. Um, but I think, you know, DOT, they have a lot of say in this project and, you know, we can push back on certain things, but we unfortunately won't be able to just throw any and everything that we'd like to see and want to see, you know, as a part of this project. So I just want to leave everyone with that ca caveat, um, you know, as we go further into, um, you know, explaining this project and some of the things that we have planned um, for the design. And, 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 I, and I, I appreciate that quite a bit, Devin. I really do understand that that's real. But we're the citizens of this town. We're on a subcommittee to tell the state and the town what we as citizens want. Okay, so our job, our perspective, our role is to ask for what we want as a community. And if the State Department decides that they can't listen to the people that live in the town, at least we tried. Okay, and there's been periods of time in which they are flying over making decisions that are not beneficial for the residents. And it's a process to make them aware of why and how they could achieve safety and accommodation for the residents. So it's our job as a subcommittee, as a resident, to push on the state despite what they think they're up to. And that's my perspective. And I just, I wanna be respectful about that. I don't wanna be, you know, I wanna be respectful about that, but that, that's my perspective here. Okay. No, understood. And, and thank you. Yeah, is there think. such a thing? This is George. Um, is there such a thing that you can have a crosswalk come off the center of that meridian and go across Main Street and have a caution light that's always flashing as a caution, similar to what they have in front of the firehouse um, up across from the town hall? And then if somebody were to cross there, because my guess is that they were trying to cross Main Street and they got clipped, is what I'm thinking might have happened. And then if somebody goes to cross there, they push a button, then that caution light goes red. That's and a great idea, a, George. There is a system called the Hawk system that is is essentially that. That's um, what they put in to Trumbull in and, some and, of their crossing street, yeah. street crossings. And, and so that, that does, that is effective. Uh, so it is a blinking yellow light until someone pushes the button and then it stops traffic. Again, we really can't make any decisions until we understand more of the fatality 
and and what what occurred i think we'll definitely look into um the police reports and and the accident reconstruction part of it um and to really the dot's goal i know i think we've all had issues with dot but the dot's goal is safety it's pedestrian safety it's vehicular safety that all their design standards really come down to safety. So if we find that this is an unsafe area that is frequently used by pedestrians, we will talk to DOT about right. what we can do to make it safer. Yeah, I'm and really the stoplight we're we're really fix it. Time. Yeah, yeah we, we can move on, um, but that's we definitely... Move it's, on. We won't get through the plan before. It, yeah, we, we, we definitely before, want to... Before, before you move on, one... Um, Thing that's kind of sort of my side with this intersection where the Huntington Road comes into Main Street. And I had mentioned this before this committee was this formal, to be honest with you, way back when, when we were just doing sketches. And I've also mentioned this to Susmitha. I truly think that the end of Huntington Road should be a 90 degree turn back onto Main Street. They did something similar to that um, north, way north, on the River Road coming out of the old. Old Main Street onto River Road. It had an intersection just like this, because there's a lot of accidents here. And they had an intersection just like this. And what they did is they coming south on Huntington Road, instead of flying through, possibly ignoring the light or whatever, you would turn down this page, so south on this page, and be 90 degrees intersection <clears throat> um, onto Main Street. And then you would go either right or left. And I truly think that it would clean up this intersection a lot from a pedestrian point of view. From a more of a standard um, vehicular point of view, um, and I was wondering if any thought has been put into that. I can only tell you that that's been discussed amongst all the parties extensively, even before complete streets. Uh, the, one of the problems is we will lose a good portion of of uh, Paradise Green if we do start doing something like that. Well, you wouldn't though, Harold, because the, the tip, this green tip, that could all stay. And that's where they could put all their signs for, you know, the Knights of Columbus and tree sales and all that stuff. It would be a roadway that went through, you know, the, the green at that tip. So whatever, at whatever point back from that tip made sense, that would all be grass, including what now is paved. So it would actually make the green larger. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just chip in. I, I manage the farmer's market on Paradise Green every Monday for six months of the year. And I, I really feel George's suggestion would be beneficial. And I can tell you that very few people and very few activities happen down at the tip. It's, it's all, most of the activity is on the north side of the gazebo. And I know we have little time, so I'm going to be quiet. Um. My concern, I just, my ahead. concern, seeing that bump out of the curb, it doesn't look like there's space for a row of cars to travel south from Huntington to connect onto Maine. It looks like a, a lane was cut off. That there's room for cars to go north from Maine onto Huntington, but now there's no lane for cars to go south from Huntington to Maine, where right. that curb is bumped out. Yeah. When I get to the striping panel, we can. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Talk, go go over what we are proposing there. Um, just just to finish up, going further north along um, Main Street, Paradise Green is up in this section here. Um, we are looking to add some uh, curb extensions, bump outs to help shorten this crosswalk. Again, shorter crosswalks are safer crosswalks. Uh, we are extending some of the island and reworking some of the parking along uh, the shops in, in front here to allow for a bike lane along the roadway, some parallel parking where, where this diagonal parking currently is, and maintaining the diagonal parking in front of the shops. Again, this is all trying to square up some of these long crosswalks, trying to square them up, shorten them up, so they're easier to uh, navigate this area because we see a lot of pedestrian activity in this area we really kind of want that, to make it short is that fenelon and wilcoxon right there where your hand is or pointer yes thank you yep and i'm i'm sorry to chime in again but i have to if you if you take away the extra paved space uh on paradise you know on the paradise green which you just showed 
and and came in, you know, and took away the extra pavement uh, on Main Street, what would happen to the farmers market is that we would not be able to park the vendors on Main Street and have them safely load and unload onto the green. Moving that moving that curb out and taking that extra space would prevent a, would cause a significant problem for a community institution. I don't see where he's taking away Main Street. He was taking he's, away parking spots. The, that's exactly right. Okay, so the, you know, no, you look at Parad- I don't know. You look at look at Paradise Green, and and I heard that you were going to widen, you know, the green a little bit to take a little bit of the pavement away. There is that correct? There is, I'd say about a foot, foot and a half that we're trying to straighten out the curb along this section of Paradise Green. We are extending the okay, curb that's, at the Okay, that's a safety zone for my vendors, okay? That's a safety zone because they can park on the edge of the green and they can open up mm-hmm. their door safely and still be within the white line. As well as when they very have important issue. people parking there or any town that's event a, on the green. You can park next to the green, you can open up the driver's side door and you, the driver's side door is still within the white line. That is a very important issue to the farmer's market. Let me and any ahead. event on the green road. Jump ahead to the paradise, the, to the to the striping plan in this section. Okay. Yeah. So here, here is the bump. We do show. have a row of actually formalized parallel parking spots along this section. That's so in this that section. Um, I guess that's probably. The section that we're looking at. So we're actually that's very beneficial actually now that i see the striping plan that's very beneficial because the yeah. biking lane creates more safety zone yeah so there's there's a parallel parking a biking lane a buffer to the biking lane and then the travel lane so we are creating actually more space along this uh, section this does area par- is hatched to, for the uh, bus stop rob does the parking um i'm concerned about door opening into bike lanes mm-hmm have you accom- have you accommodated that in any way? Uh, the, the, yeah, it's it's always a concern. It obviously is. Um, so we have made these parking spots. I believe they're uh, I think they're nine feet wide. I have to measure that. But so you're including um, three feet. So, within so we are including some space to get okay. some doors open, and then we have the bike lane. So that is always a challenge in in any one of these bike lane uh, designs where. Do you try to put the buffer between the, the parked cars and the bike lane or between the bike lane and the moving vehicles? So this I, I can the, tell you that in New Haven on Chapel Street, they had the parking and then they had the bike lane and they're tearing it all up and they're putting the bike lane on the inside and the cars on the outside. They well, did that's it. what New York City is doing also. I don't know why we're not following that standard. Yeah, this is this is interesting because the, uh, those cars that are at an angle, those cars are staying. These here, in front, in front of the building. Yeah, those. Right. Yes. So they so they'd be backing into a back bike lane. Yes. That doesn't seem like a safe thing to me. That bike. So you have cars going north on Main Street. A bike lane and then a parking area that you're that seems awfully and you get rid of the concrete and extra parking spaces that are near the building so they're losing parking and now the parking's on the other side near the green so they lost parking for those re- for those stores and restaurants for these stores we there's a loss of about nine spaces along this edge wow yeah, not everyone can parallel park either. That's a lot. That's a lot. That is a lot because there's and hardly. We went any- through well, several variations of this of uh, keeping the bike lane actually going through the parking area, keeping the bike lane. The, the decision was made to keep the bike lane along with the moving traffic as the bikes bikes follow well, the traffic I mean- rules. Why wouldn't the bike lane be tight to the sidewalk if we're really doing this all over again? Why won't why? The bike lane follows the vehicle travel lanes instead of going through the parking area. Everyone felt that putting the bike lane through the parking area 
would be dangerous. But on the other side, you just showed us it is in the, you can back right into the bike lane. Is, this is Karen, is that correct? Because yeah. so, there's no island here. So that's incredibly dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's similar to what was uh, approved in phase one as well. You know what, I'm going to suggest that this is very complicated and we all have a lot of concerns and we should mm -hmm. take this offline and really look at this hard and have a follow up because I do feel Harold's right and we should get through the whole flyover in this meeting. But okay. I see so many problems here. This is not okay with me until mm -hmm. I really spend a lot of time thinking about this. I spend a lot of time up at Paradise Green yep. and I understand it's super complicated, but we can't we can't fix this here but we should get the flyover we should get the whole flyover All right so it is a challenging area and uh certainly most of our time has been spent in this area uh, that's that's again why we want to present this to you at a 30 percent design because now's the time that we can um make some changes and can i give can i give a little history if you look at the original uh design plan from four years ago, five years ago, what we did in Paradise in the retail section is we stopped it a block beforehand with tons of bike parking racks. Where the currently, where the new flower shop is going in, we stopped it at that corner. I forget the name of the street there, but we did not even go into Paradise. Brewster. Uh, Green. We stopped it at Brewster for the very yeah. reason we could not come up with a solution that met everybody's needs. And I, I just, I appreciate moving forward up to this point. This is a complicated piece. I'm, I'm very grateful that we're working on it inside phase two. So I think it's a wonderful thing that we're trying to get all the way up into Paradise Green. We just, we just got to take some time and think about it, but let's get the flyover done because it's important. Up, this route is going all the way up to Sikorsky. So, we have to get through the Paradise Green in some way. They can go through Fenelon and down Huntington and connect back to Maine and not be on the retail side at all. Can I interrupt, Chairman? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so let's just get through this presentation for today. And then um, if needed, I would schedule uh, another meeting. I mean, I have to talk to Rob and the team regarding the timeline and, um, you know, if you can give us, a, you know, some concerns you have rather than solutions, maybe, you know, Rob can look at the concerns and try to address them engineering wise. Sometimes um, some concerns are technically feasible, sometimes they're not, but, you know, if you tell him, this is problematic in this or this is concerning to me in an email and send to Rob then uh, maybe that's a better approach for him uh, to balance community concerns with technicality of actually having this put in place on this uh, segment and the next step would be to determine what a timeline is and if we have more time um, to spend on this maybe I would uh, you know squeeze in another Greenway meeting maybe we can do it in person if you want uh, if that is more convenient, uh, but you know, one step at a time. Let's just get through this today, and then um, you can either send all together as one memorandum expressing your concerns at the next meeting, or by email, whatever you feel is comfortable. I, I just have a quick question. That's a very good idea. Do we have access to these draw drawings? Um, Rob, you can send them over. I can. I can send. Um... You can definitely send them to you, Sasmita, and, and maybe you can okay. provide a link to the committee. Yeah, I will. And, Thank and you Susmita, so much. I actually think, Thank I, you. I, think I sent you a copy to John, um, to yourself and John. I can send that again so that you can share it with the, with the larger group. Sure. I didn't know if there were more changes since then, but that would be great if you can okay. reach that. Yeah. Uh, All the right, other we'll thing do that. remember is also this is just the committee you know, the committee's opinion of this. And, you know, Rob has a big task now 
we have to arrange a public meeting and seek public input too and you know balance everyone's opinion so at this point it doesn't really make sense for him to change the designs much because of the costs involved but it'll be nice to express the concerns mark up your drawings and say i would not prefer this this is not recommended so we'll take all comments in and we'll do our best to balance everyone's perspective on this um, route and make sure we get it right Let's uh, move hey, back. Me, does, does this committee have any, um, I don't know if clout is the word, but does this committee have any uh, formal say into concerns or, I, you know, again, I go back to that tip at Paradise Green, which I've been talking about for probably two years now, and it's still the same way. So it's being ignored for whatever reason, and maybe it's not the right thing to do, but my concern is that, you know, if this moves forward, I mean, if there's precedences that have been set elsewhere in the state or the country, or whatever the case may be, we have Englewood parking backing into a bike lane and then backing into a driving lane. I mean, that, that just seems so bizarre to me, but maybe that's the uh, standard practice. I don't, I don't know, but it just seems, I'm looking at this and I just see nothing but accidents. Well, I think we did the same thing for phase one. Uh, on the other side, near the town center, because of the challenges we've had, we nearly spent a an year and a half trying to navigate that with DOT, uh, who were unwilling to budge on certain things that we wanted to see. So I think we are setting our own precedent here, but that doesn't mean that we should have um, unsafe bike lanes. If there is, you know, reasonable concern about safety and um, evidence that it is really unsafe then definitely, um, you know, we have to work together like DOT, the town, Greenway Committee and the community members. So like I said, this is just the start and um, we can't have Rob redo the whole thing um, and then go back to the community and the community feels a different way and then having to redo and then go to DOT and then redo. So I would say, you know, your concerns are valid and just express all your concerns whatever they are in an email. And then um, we'll still probably be showing the same thing to the public, just to, you know, like I said, we only have so much money to spend on this, but that doesn't mean those are the final, but we'll take everyone's input, see what the best solution is here, talk to DOT and figure out a way to address everyone's concerns. Yep, fair enough. And I, may I just remind everybody that this is a state owned road. So ultimately, it's the DOT that's going to make the decision. I know from phase one, we've fought for portions of solutions that all it did was extend the timeline. <laughs> Eventually, we had to compromise with the DOT based on what their needs were. Their purpose here is traffic calming um, and eliminating as many motor vehicle um dangerous situations as possible um i just like to you know we these are all great comments let's just move down the street a bit as we're moving down um this is huntington again we're talking about so it's a single travel lane and just to address the, the extension of the curb here so it's a single travel lane, then that moves right across and into a single travel lane moving down. So, so this is Freeman on the left hand side. It's Freeman on the left hand side, Huntington, okay. and so it'd be a single signalized traffic lane that would move into a single lane as well. So the traffic would be stopped here, and then you'd be able to move into this, this, uh, the traffic lane there. And this was able to get try to shorten up some of this and and get that bike lane across a, a large expansive pavement. Um, so that's that's kind of to, um, what we're looking at to get here is to have a single lane into a single lane. Um, as we move further down again it's it's bike lane, single travel lane and then we have a a shared twin um, left turn lane in the middle, travel lane to the north, and a bike lane heading to the north. 
And this is also mimics the recommendation from DOT of what they wanted to do here. So this helps reduce helps reduce the two travel lanes on each side, so we can actually fit a bike lane in there, which allows the bike lane helps reduce uh, some traffic volume, so it's not as wide of a sea of pavement that from a visual standpoint of uh, of the motoring vehicle. It helps reduce speeds, gets your bike lane in each direction, and then has that. How, many, 20... how wide were you able to fit the bike lanes? Bike lanes are five feet wide. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. That, and this concept extends further down. Oh, I went the wrong <coughs> way. Extends further down as we head towards Barnum again. The shared. Um, left turn lane in the middle and the travel lanes each side with the uh, with the dedicated bike lane. And this fits within the uh, fits within the current road width. Where are you right now? We are this is north. That's north North Avenue. Okay, north beers. Um, and up here's hillside. Okay. Bird. And the same concept as we're moving down is a we're trying to eliminate the the two lanes and just have one travel lane plus the left turn lane. And I mean, you know, to me, this, you know, contrary to what we just talked about at Paradise Green itself, I think this is a huge improvement. And this, this to me makes a real lot of sense because you got traffic flowing. And then if you do have to make a left or right, you're, you have a dedicated lane, you've got bikes that are up against the curb. This to me looks wonderful. So mm -hmm. I really yeah. would kind of extend this philosophy somehow to Paradise Green. I think it'd be a home run. And I agree, this looks wonderful. And I remember in the first phase of this thing, I remember it being mentioned that in some of these spaces in the center, there was talk of replicating the center islands with the beautiful uh, lighting that is further down where the current complete streets is right in Main Street. Those little brick islands where they plant flowers and they have the, the nice black lampposts. Has that been considered here? Not, not so much in here because we'd, we'd lose too much yeah. ability to move the trap. We don't have the space for it, essentially. You can't What's fill it? the dead space of the shared turn lane in places? I don't think there is any, Tom. That, that turn lane okay. looks the same. It's really... the, the turn lane is pretty consistent throughout. There are there are right. several driveways um, okay. along the way that we don't really want to limit, limit access to those driveways. Okay. Right. Okay. And the problem also is you want to be able to get in and out of that turning lane as quickly and efficiently as possible. So you don't want anything to impede the flow. Purpose is to lower the speed rates eight to 10 miles an hour with this setup. And as we approach Barnum Avenue, um, this intersection, we are maintaining the current traffic patterns and going with a the shared use bike lane. Where's so the bike lane? At, I don't see the, the bike lane. Yeah, so it'd be the shared use. You'd actually be sharing the travel lanes as you get into the busy intersection of Barnum, similar to what was done on phase one as we approached Barnum from the south. It was a, a shared shared use configuration. Then as we move away from that intersection um, at Longbrook, then we start the dedicated bike lanes. Again, that is to maintain the um, traffic um, that is at Barnum Avenue to, to maintain that the capacity of Barnum Avenue intersection. So then, all, so at some point, all of a sudden, the bikes are in the same lane as the car. Yes, at at Longbrook, they would be using the shared shared lanes. But there will be signage that indicates yeah. you know, right. the the bike lane being 
you know, concluding and then um, showing that the travel way will now be shared with, with bikes. Okay. So these, these are the signage, bike lane ends, bikes in lane, bike lane ahead, and then bike lane. So it does notify people of what's happening. You can't you can't put the signage saying uh, shared bike lanes instead of bike lane ends. I I the whole notion of a bike lane ending is a dangerous dangerous notion. Highways don't end. <laughs> bike lanes shouldn't end either. Um, but what we need to do is to instruct the people in cars that you're suddenly going to have bikes mixed in with you. And I right. think the idea of saying bike lane ends uh, in terms of litigiousness might be a good factor, but in terms of getting both autos and bikes to understand that this is a shared road, I think there's signage that could say that without having to say bike lane ends. As a question, it looks like there's a lot of grass area between the sidewalk and the road. Is there any reason why at this point you couldn't go on the other side of the curb to be in that grass belt and then come back out? So you're not in the drive lane? Yeah, I and mean, there's there are advantages and disadvantages as you get closer to the intersection. Um, where do you, how do you end it? The, the safest way that's been discussed is that to get the keep the bikes uh, along with the traffic. Once you get off road, then back on road, it gets very confusing for the vehicles. And studies have shown that it gets even a little bit more dangerous. Well, I'm, I'm concerned about the litigiousness. I mean, if if the sign says bike line bike lane ends, and I'm driving a car, I'm going to assume there's not going to be any bikes in that lane. Now, right. I'm riding right. my bicycle. And typically, I keep going forward and I get hit. I think not only the town will not be responsible, neither will that driver. But that's not in actuality what's really happening. The bike line, the bike lane continues. So I'm I'm confused with Harold with that sign. I think that's really problematic on, on many different levels, just to keep the bicyclist safe. And, How about and yield to, to bikes? <laughs> You know, a giant yield to bikes sign. Okay. What we're doing here is following the standard signage that is uh, associated with bike lanes. Uh, so the bike lane and the dedicated bike lane does end, and then bikes in lane, so that sign is, is shown here to identify that, yes, bike lanes will be in the lane. Yes, but the bike in lane sign happens at the end of where you enter that bike line in lane it should start where the bike lane ends not 30 feet up the road just the placement of the sign would be a good step to move well, the placement of the sign is on the other side of the signalized intersection i'm sorry the, say that again the, the placement of the sign is on the other side of the signalized intersection so people can if you Place signs. We're found, place signs too close to each other. They are confusing. Uh, okay. But, but we I, have, I'm confused. Just look. I'm confused. We're going to run out of time. We have about four minutes left. So. <clears throat> that is, that is our 30% design. Like I said, it's a uh, under review um, by the town, by Metrocog, by ourselves, and DOT. We'll be uh, reviewing all these plans and then moving forward into a 60% design. And we'll try to address uh, all the comments as we move forward. I, I have just one question for Susmitha, right? And I, I, I hear you saying it's like it's under review by the town. And my impression, and I just want to be corrected, is my impression is this subcommittee is the representation of the town with the town planner and the town engineer and a couple citizens and are, are we the town or is somebody else evaluating this in a different way than this subcommittee? There are three aspects to this. You are the town committee, um, definitely, uh, and you report to the planning commission. So um, the planning commission 
is in charge of the overall long range planning of the town. So they would hear from you, they would hear from the larger community. And then we also have this additional responsibility of having to work with the DOT because it's their road. Ultimately, it's like us planning in somebody's backyard. And yeah. they have to give us the right to do what we want them to do. Um, so, you know, we have to balance three aspects here. So your voice definitely matters. And that's why this is not the final. It's not even like, you know, in order for Rob to come to this point, he has to do something. He has to draw something so you can critique them. And he used his best judgment here as an engineer. And he has been in, uh, in constant discussions with myself and John Casey when he was developing this. But this is not final, and this is your initial input on this. We completely understand that there are concerns here. Now, we also have this additional responsibility of hearing from the general public what they think, uh, and also from the DOT as to what their thoughts are. Then we'll regroup, revisit these concepts, and come back with a middle ground for everyone, and then represent to this, uh, this concept to you at um, one of our next meetings. That's great, Susmita. I appreciate that. And I just want to say, I appreciate, Rob, all your work and all the time you put into this. Absolutely. And I just want you to know that we appreciate it. And we're not, I'm not trying to express anything except like, okay, I'm seeing this information for the first time and I have concerns. So I just want you to know that we really appreciate all your work. And BSC Group has done a wonderful job through this whole process. So I just, just want to make sure we don't forget that. Great. Thank you. I certainly welcome your input too. Yeah, and I, I, would, I would ditto that. This is not a this is not, not attack on you at all. It's just um, first time we're seeing it, we have a reaction to it. I, I have to leave here, but I, I have a suggestion. Um, if this makes sense to you in a committee, it, maybe if we have a um, set of these drawings plotted out, we can get together in a special meeting. You know, it doesn't have to wait till next month. Um, create a special meeting and all of us sit down around the table as a group and agree on what our comments as a group are to get back to this meet their Robin engineering and all that stuff does that make sense or rather than each one of us give an input all of us as a group come to an agreement i don't know if you're aware anybody's aware of it but we're going on three years of not having met in person so we haven't met in person for the last two and a half years but we can we meet could, in the library Harold. we could well remember we're we're an official we're an official task force or whatever subgroup so whatever we do has to be done in public um, you mean you have to invite the public? Or they have to have access to what our discussions are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So we could arrange a five o'clock, six o'clock meeting at town hall in one of the conference rooms right. and do this around the table. I'm sure we could come up with the money that we would need to pay Rob to do that. Um, but we could he could bring his plats and we could go through them. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. I have to leave. I have a doctor's appointment. Um, okay. but, um, you know, you can send me all your comments and I will consolidate into a document and then we can think about a public meeting sometime okay. later. Thanks again. I have to leave as well. I'm sorry. Sure. Thank you. Thanks everybody for their good comments. Make a motion. Thank, thank you. Wait, wait. Oh. Harold? Yes, ma'am. Could you please accept oh. a motion to approve the 2024 meeting schedule? Yes, everybody. There's the you were sent the 2024 meeting schedule. I just need a motion to accept it. So moved. Someone second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we're good with that. Um, I want to thank uh, Rob Newman and Devin Clark for being patient with us. Absolutely. Um, I appreciate it. Um, and we've lived with this pro these projects for so long that um, there are babies. We, it's hard for us not to be passionate. Um, having said that, I think I need someone to give me a, oh, I, before we stop, before we stop, we finished our last ride. I wanna thank Jim. I wanna thank, uh, it was Jim, it was Chris, myself who organized all of these rides karen was there for most of them um we i think we're incredibly successful 
if you go to Stratford Housatonic Greenway, you can see videos of all of our rides. Um, so thank everybody yeah. for that. Thank you, thank you everybody, especially Jim, for always you know flooding uh, cyberspace uh, because I too forget sometimes. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the ride. So um, really well done advertising it, Jim. All right. I, that's it. Our next meeting is Aileen. I don't know when the exact date of our next meeting is because of election. December 1st. When is it? November 1st? November 1st. Okay. So November 1st is our next meeting. Keep an eye out for this special meeting that Smith is going to try to organize. Uh, and if she does, please find a way to be there. I'll, I'll the accept other, the motion to close. Just Howard, last thought, the other the other way to do this would be to do a two hour meeting on the first, but a motion to close. No, no two hour meeting, please. <laughs> oh. Special in person, because I feel like we can get more done in person. I, I, we all, I don't know. And if That's we're going to do, a, if we're going to do an in person meeting, we have to do it at night. We can't do it during the day. That's fine. Um, we really have okay. to. There. That's just my personal opinion, and wanted to throw it out there. It means after five o'clock. After five o'clock. Yeah. Zoning. It's, it's, um, Aileen is the per perfect person to say when we would have. There's some place in the schedule that we could fit this in. So let her and Sir Smith uh, iron this out, and we'll have to accept what they iron out. Is that okay, Aileen? Yep, I have to go. Second motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, Aileen.